Let me see Marcelle. Hello. Some of you I've probably met in um, my travels around the state. Um, I worked with Jeff to kind of put the safety day together. He sent out a um, survey, I think, that maybe some of you have taken. And we kind of put together a training program that is a little bit of everything you ask for. So today, what we're going to talk about is general workplace safety. And I know that when we looked at the survey results, one of the things was identifying and correcting workplace hazards. I know a lot of you have new responsibilities or newly assigned responsibilities to, or what I like to call, you got that magic wand waved over your head and said, congratulations, you now get the safety responsibilities. So I'm going to try to teach you the best that I can in this little short amount of time things that you're most likely to see at some of your facilities or some of the locations. Um, I'm also going to touch on some of the environmental staff that may have to go out into the workforce, to the nursing staff that may have to go out into the workforce, or your field educators that have to go out, and those things that might um, contribute to accidents or things to be aware of. Um, there is, I have provided a copy of these handouts, um, and I guess they'll get posted. Yeah, by the end of the day. By the end of the day, they'll get posted out there. So you'll have this training presentation. Um, if, you ch if you guys decide that, hey, this is something that we'd like to do at each of the localities, um, I'll be glad to, it, it's kind of a large program, but I can definitely give that to the agency so that you can use it for, for your own purposes. That's not a problem. Anything that we develop or create for the Commonwealth of Virginia is owned by the Commonwealth of Virginia, so there's no copyright infringement. Um, there's going to be a lot of pictures that you see in here. Some guilty parties might recognize their facilities. Um, <laughs> other things are just taken from other um, agencies around the state, so it's not just all, they're not all your problems with CVH. I kind of pulled problems from everywhere, but there are some gu guilty parties in here, and I'm not going to call any names or mention them, but they might recognize themselves. Um, one of the ways I like to do training is very, I like to do mostly interactive. It's kind of hard to do it with Polycom um, because people try to talk over each other. So if you have a question, if you're like me, ask the question right now because you'll forget it in two minutes. So um, what I'd like to do is go ahead and get started. And um, like I said, if you have questions, interrupt, and we'll go forward from there. Can they see the slide? There we go. All right. So basically, we're going to talk a little bit about um, general workplace safety. Um, my contact information is here. We're always available by telephone um, or email. Um, a lot of what we do is telephonic um, consultation. So. All right, so we need to talk a little bit about what is our workplace and what are those exposures that we see on a routine basis. Well, obviously, we, we have mostly office spaces. We have laboratories or clinical settings, depending on what building that you're at and you're seeing patients or clients um, at those facilities. So you have the general public coming into you. We have hallways where people slip in and fall in. We have hallways where our visitors like to spill things and don't tell anybody. And then we come along and we slip and fall on those. It might just be the outside grounds, the parking lot, the sidewalks. Sometimes we, VDH, and when I say we, I'm, I'm talking about VDH, is responsible for those sidewalks. Sometimes it's contract work. So it's real important that we kind of coordinate either the business managers, um, or whomever is responsible for coordination with the landlords or the contractors. Um, we're not having to worry about it too much right now because we're not getting into the winter months, but slips, trips, and fall hazards with ice and snow, that always is a problem, regardless of whether or not it's at your building or whether you're having to go to another facility. So if you're going to a private home, if you're going to do restaurant inspections, if you're with the um, the drinking water section and you're going out in the field and taking your samples and doing all that kind of neat, cool stuff, um, you've got to watch for that. Most of us, at some point as part of our job, have to get in a vehicle to get somewhere. There's a huge emphasis on vehicle safety and driver safety. We offer some of those classes. They're free to you. Um, we do them 
live and through the new iLink system. So it's similar to Polycom. Um, and it's called Driver Safety and Accident Prevention or Safe Driving Techniques. It's not defensive driving because defensive driving is a trademark name and we can't use it, but it's some of those same things. Um, and then we're getting ready to put out a new program in a couple months on non-traditional vehicle type things like motors, uh, mowers, that kind of stuff, which not so sure some of your agency has that exposure. But you can go online and take the driver safety class or you can do it in person um, or you can do it through the iLink system. So if you go out onto the DHRM Knowledge Center site, um, we have that training. We also do the OSHA 10 hour classes. I have several people from VDH this next week, the 15th and the 16th, that are attending that class. Um, and that just kind of gives you another brief overview of all the OSHA standards and regulations that, that are required. Um, and those are free to you. If you were to go outside and get that, you're going to look at anywhere from $450 plus per class per person. So those are free to you. Um, so that's kind of, and then our private establishments. We cannot control those establishments that we go into for either inspections to provide services, but what we can do is protect ourselves by taking a minute and looking at, hey, are those steps safe to walk on? You know, is there a dog? You know, is there <laughs> do not enter? Is there a dog in their yard? Um, and unfortunately, we've had that happen. People have been attacked by animals, um, a variety of animals. It doesn't necessarily have to be a dog. It can be a raccoon. It can be a skunk. It can be a bunch of different animals. So we got to take all those things into consideration. Um, so like I said, I'm going to give you some examples as we go through here and I'm going to try to hit highlights that I know you've had before or exposures or accidents that I've seen um, and try to hit each department so I can give examples so that everybody's kind of covered. All right, the typical workplace hazards that we see are electrical hazards and we're going to talk in detail about each of these. Um, slips, trips, and falls, I think everybody is probably would agree the two major accidents and they flip-flop back and forth between it, your, your agency, the Department of Health, and the Commonwealth overall is slips, trips, and falls and strains and sprains or what we consider material handling. You lift something, oh, I hurt my back. Um, I was walking in the parking lot and I slipped and fell. So we're going to give you some techniques and strategies to kind of prevent those from happening office equipment. Um, office equipment, that's all I'm going to say. You'll understand when we get to the picture section. Um, and there are some guilty parties um, that I've taken pictures of and, and, and you'll have your aha moment. Talk about chemicals, so if you have a contract cleaning crew, if you're bringing your own chemicals in, if you're, an agent, if you're a department that uses chemicals as part of your day-to-day -day process, um, some of the nursing departments use cleaners and that type of stuff to disinfect. We're going to talk about what those requirements are. And then housekeeping. That's a big thing. And when I say housekeeping, it doesn't necessarily mean dirt and grime. It could mean clutter and hoarding. And we better keep it 100 years because we may never get it again. Okay. So we're going to, and we'll show you some examples of those as we go through here too. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the office environment. Um, I think that probably is going to relate to most everybody that's um, participating today. We've got tons of different file cabinets. We've got chairs. People like to stand on chairs. Don't know why. There's always two or three claims where people think, I can stand on this rolly chair to get that swivels, you're right, that, to get that box up on the top shelf and then next thing you know they're laying on the ground and they're like, oh, I hope nobody saw me, but I'm really hurt so I need to file a workers' comp claim. Okay? Everybody does it. It's one of those bad habits we have to try to break. We've all probably been guilty of it at one point or another. We're going to talk about workstation designs and setups. Um, one of the services that we do provide to you and I've done for quite a few people um, with the Department of Health is ergonomic assessments. Okay. We come out, we provide ergonomic assessments. You know that 1940s metal desk that was a military surplus? I got some people fixed up and they're good to go now. So 
we make do, we figure stuff out, but you know, I can't get you new equipment, and I can't get you money, and I can't get you a new building. But I might be able to get you some help on not having head, shoulder, neck, arm aches, okay? Computer setup is similar to workstation design, yep. and then office equipment and machinery. And we're gonna talk about, you know what, I went up to that printer today and went to put the print button, and all that hair stood up on the arm of my hand, or my, on the, uh, the hair stood up on my arm. And it's, I got this tingly feeling. What's going on with that? Okay. And then, you know, you wonder why everybody's feeling a little fuzzy for the next couple of days. So, all right. File cabinets. We've got all different kinds of file cabinets. So we're talking about vertical and horizontal file cabinets. Everybody knows what happens if you have the old-fashioned horizontal file cabinet. We like to cram all the files in the top drawer and all the files in the second drawer. But we don't really put a lot on the bottom drawer because it's too far to bend down and reach. So when we open that bottom drawer, all of a sudden that file cabinet gets unstable and it likes to come towards us. Or we decide, hey, we're going to pull out two drawers at one time and it comes tipping over towards us. Okay? So we got to stop that. Um, the other thing we have to think about is when you pack your drawer so tight of files that you're actually, can they see me? Can no. they see me too? You want me okay. to? Ask, you want me to? Yeah, let me just to. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm an animated trainer, so I can't talk without my hands. I cut my hands off, can't talk. <laughs> um, so you, you have all those files crammed into the drawer like this. And then what you do is, you, and everybody knows, you're pinching to try to pull it out. You're actually doing strain and sprain damage to your arms and to your fingers because it's all packed in there and you can't get the files out. Okay? Horizontal file cabinets, those are the new ones, you know, that you have to use those nice hangy files. Use the hanging files. That's what they're built for. That bottom metal plate, you know, I bet you somebody's had this happen. They put all this stuff in this nice drawer. They go to pull the drawer out and the bottom falls out. And the files fly everywhere. That sheet metal on the bottom is not rated to hold the weight of files. It's those two little bars on the sides of the drawer when you pull it out. So that's just a, a quick little tip. Um, if you're having problems with your file cabinets tipping back and forth, you might need to mount them to the wall, secure them to the wall some way, a brace, a bracket, something like that. Remember, please shut file cabinet drawers so that when our friends are walking by, we don't trip over them, cut our ankle on them, say words that are inappropriate in the work environment, because um, they do hurt. 